Hey guys, we wanted to welcome you to the special day of a virtual field trip. This morning we are at the Wichita Art Museum and we will be exploring the inspired art by the ancient Greeks. Um, for the first part of this, what I'm going to do is we're going to share a quick video and then we're going to um, introduce our crew that will be working with us and um, talk about the the art that they have there at the Wichita Art Museum. So give me just a moment to switch over. Welcome to the Rotunda, one of the many galleries here at the Wichita Art Museum. This gallery features a collection of 19th century paintings displayed in what's called a salon style. This means they are hung in tight, random formations on the wall. This was a popular way of presenting artwork in homes and museums throughout the 19th century. Here you will see work of all genres, history, portraiture, landscape, and still life. Embracing both the artwork and the installation style of 19th century America, the paintings in this salon span the course of the entire century. Today we will look closely at some of the artwork here in the Rotunda. Awesome. Okay, so let's look at, hold on just a moment here. Let me pull up my screen. Remember to talk slow. Okay. There we go. Well, hello out there. My name is Arian and I work here at the Wichita Art Museum. My purpose is to help you look at art today. So when you come to the art museum, and I hope that most of you out there have come to the art museum, and if you haven't, we're inviting you to come with us today. We're gonna look at some art. And as after you saw that intro, you saw that there's lots of art here at the art museum. And I'm standing in this special room with all of the art hanging here on the walls in that fashion. But today we're gonna look at one work together and my purpose is to help you look at this art. And the first thing to do is to stop, slow down, and I'm gonna give you a couple questions that you may wanna write your answers in the chat as we're talking about this artwork together. So the first thing we should do is say, what do you notice first? What's the first thing that catches your eye when you look at a work of art? So that's question one. Question two will be, what do you think is going on in this work of art? So we may want to think of other questions to ask, like, are there figures in this work of art? And if so, what are they doing? And we can even look at the figures and say, what are they wearing? And perhaps, what's the setting that they're in? Maybe like, what's the weather? Uh, if you know maybe the location that you think they're at, these are the things that you're gonna think about today as we look at art together. So I brought my friend and our fellow and a fellow docent along with me, and she's gonna talk a little bit about why we picked the artwork we did today. Well, hello, welcome. Thank you for coming and joining our field trip. And ours is the connection to the big read. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the book, Cersei's, written by Madeline Miller. Many of you in high school are going to be reading this in your English classes. So I'm not going to go through the whole plot of the book, but just talk about the main character. And for me, this book is kind of like if you've seen Wicked, it's kind of like portraying this from this main character who was the daughter of the son of one of the Titans, Helios. But she doesn't have much power and gets banned and goes to an island. And that's what the whole story is about her motiv motivation for why she does what she does. But one of the th great things about the painting that we've chosen to look at 
and the big read is it's about Greek and what do the Greeks do for our civilization? We have so many things connected, our architecture, our government, our music, education, so many things. Most of you, if I asked you to put in the chat, what do you know that we still do that the Greeks did? And I bet any money what you're gonna do is type in the Olympics, which are coming up. So we still have those. And for a lot of you, you're gonna like to tune into the Olympics because the Greeks wanted to be not about politics and we all need a little rest. Mm -hmm. So Arian is going to talk to you a little bit before we view the painting of some of the styles that the Greeks chose for their women so that when we analyze the painting, you'll be able to give us some answers better and have some questions for us. Okay. So here's the painting that we have here. And maybe some of you are putting in your chat that you see that there's figures here. And we're gonna look a little more closely at what they're wearing. And I really like this painting because I want to look very carefully at the style of dress they're wearing. And then it starts to make me think about what is that? And why are they wearing that? So maybe some of you are putting into the chat what you see. What do you think they're wearing? What kind of fabric you think that is? What are the colors you see? Do you see decorations? That type of thing. So when I look at it, I'm noticing that I see that they're wearing very loose fitting clothing, right? So the Greeks wore very loose fitting, simple clothing. In fact, the Greeks didn't change their style of fashion for more than 400 years. And even then the Romans copied a lot of these looks. So we're gonna look some more and maybe some of you are noticing that, that they are wearing very drapey, loose fitting clothing. Maybe some of you are thinking, hmm, it looks warm outside. And if we think about where Greece is in the world, it is a very warm, climate. So Greeks wore very loose fitting clothing because they wanted to keep cool. And we're also maybe noticing that there are very pale colors. So if they're wearing very loose fitting clothing, they are probably dyeing them in natural colors to give some variations to these clothing. And actually the Greeks uh, the Greek style of dress was made out of things like cotton and linen, which were readily available for them. And then later were made of silk when the silk trade became uh, into their region. And the silk was very a luxury, was a very luxurious item. So maybe these, some of these things they're wearing could be made of silk. I don't know, that's something maybe you guys can decide. So I'm going to talk a little bit about Greek fashion. Uh, if we can go to the slide uh, and then I'll talk you through some of these words. OK, now you're seeing a slide. The first one we have is called the he tone and it was kind of the basic form of Greek dress. So a he tone was just a long tube basically sewn where you could put your head through and then your shoulders through. And then you would wrap maybe a belt or some kind of cording. So you see that in the first part. And then there was the peplos. And that was what women wore. And it was the long style of dress. So maybe you can see, oh, they're wearing perhaps some peplos here. And then we have the hemate. Hematian, and I'm kind of going to model that a little bit. Uh, so you can see on the slide at the bottom, the Hematian was kind of like an overcloak. So I don't know, is the camera on me? Yeah, okay. So I'm wearing a Hematian, sort of. It's like a cloak, and they would just like elegantly drape it in just the right ways. In fact, they even would sew in little weights into the seams, and that gave the illusion of where do I want this pinned or tucked and how it artfully drapes on one's body. If we go back to the painting, do you guys agree? Do you think their clothing is very artfully draped on their body? 
the Greeks were, were really interested in the human form. So it was kind of a way for them to show off the beauty of the human form. So if we go back to the painting, we, we notice it's simple, but there's small variations of maybe the hematian and the peplos in the ketone here. And they're all sort of wearing the same thing, but different. The variations are how it's draped or maybe what fabric it was made out of or how they styled it with cording or belts. Um, so to me, that was one thing that stuck out when I first looked at this painting. So now DJ is going to talk a little bit more about really digging into uh, how the artist put this painting together. OK, so the first thing I'd like for you to do is in the chat, I want you to really look at this painting and tell me what you think the name. If you were the artist, what would you have named this? And then we'll talk a little bit about what they're doing in the painting and why the artist might have picked the title that he picked. So who painted this? A man named Francis Coates Jones. Strange name. Huh? He painted in the beginning of the 1900s and he was from a very wealthy family. And here's what I think is really interesting. If you guys are in school and you don't know what you want to be, this man had no idea he wanted to be a painter. He just went to Europe with his brother and he met a bunch of American painters there and so he started to study art and he ends up coming back to the United States living in New York and he becomes a very very well-known painter and he's very much known for loving to do paintings of women in costumes or we call them costumes but their daily dress he was very very interested in the type of clothing that women wore so I don't know what you guys have written in the chat for the name of this. So I'm just going to guess if we look at what are these women doing? It kind of gives you an idea, but I don't know how much you know about education for Greek women. Greek women, unless you lived in Sparta, you did not receive education. For some of you, that'd make you happy. You don't have to go to school. But for other people, you'd be really sad that you didn't get to go to school. So women spent their time. If they weren't in school, what did they do? Well, they learned to sing. They learned to sew. If they were upper class, as these women from their dress probably are, they took music lessons, not the regular types of classes you would take. Now, remember I said the Spartan women did get to go to school. But the Spartan women learned to take classes in wrestling and physical education. Can you imagine going to school all day in physical education class? For some of you, you might really like that, but for our, a lot of you, not your thing. So let's come back to this and the name of this painting. Are there any names in the chat? OK, the name of this painting is The Song. So if we look at the painting, what do you think the artist wanted us to notice first. Put in the chat whatever you think the artist wanted us to notice first. We're not all going to see the same thing. Where were your eyes first directed when you looked at this painting? What did you notice that stood out to you? Put some of those things in the chat. I'll give you an example. For me, the first time I really was showing this in a tour in the museum, I couldn't figure out what the feather thing in the center is. And it's a fan. The feather fans because as Aaron told you they were in a warm climate and I just thought that was so graceful the way it's there. Arian talked a lot about their style of dress. One of the words that's used to describe this painting in their clothing diaphanous. Your English teachers will love that word. Diaphanous means the quality of light shining from within. So let's talk about the light that's used. How did this artist use light to bring your attention to the figures. So one of the things that I think when I look at it, remember when you're looking at art and we're asking questions, unless you're the artist, there's no right answers. It's not like math class. So you could say whatever you want to. But in this one, for me, I think the light colors of the dress and then the dark background really make you look at the figures. And then if you know very much about Greece at all, and I know you do study it a lot in sixth grade, if you look at these three figures on the end, 
There is a statue at the Parthenon in Greece that's called the Three Fates. And there, those, that statue, these women are almost in the exact posture as that. So it almost makes me wonder when he went to Europe, did he go to Greece and did he see that statue? And that stuck in his mind. So Arian and I are just going to go back and forth now, pointing out different things we see in the painting. If you have questions, put them in the chat that you want to ask us about what we're talking about in this. Besides noticing what's going on or what the figures are doing, the, another good way of looking at art is just to think about maybe what's the story. Maybe you can decide what the story is. I would think that the story is these are a group of sisters and they're, they've gathered to hear one of them perform something. But I don't know what that something is. Uh, we can even talk a little bit about uh, traditions that the Greeks had, but they're gathering. And so what I noticed is look at their eyes. Look how captivated that she is, that they are on her. That's one thing that I notice when I look at the painting. And one of the things that I noticed is because I used to teach mythology, I know that the Greeks believed that music was a gift from the gods. And so they used it in funerals, in weddings, in athletic competitions, in anything, any way they could get it in, they use music. And so when I look at the central figure right there, she's holding a musical instrument, which she is probably playing. We don't know. It's probably a lyre because that was the one used most often. But there's another one that they consider to be a guitar that looks like that has the two prongs on it and it's called a cathara. So we're not really sure unless we had artist notes what it really is. But I'm also drawn to how attentive these women are and what could she be singing? What type of music could she be singing? The other thing that I really notice, Arian, is look at the material that we've talked a lot about. Contrast that with he has this beautiful soft fabric. And then what are the girls leaning on? If you can see at home this painting, then look at the marble. That's hard marble. So look at the contrast he's giving you between soft and hard surfaces. We can even talk about a little bit more about the contrast because you might have noticed that they're wearing pale colors, but yet we see this background being very dark. And there's another uh, example of contrast that the artist is using in this artwork. OK, I also want to point out the more I look at it, I look at um, they must have planned this event because if you look at the lady over here, She's got a pillow there to prop herself up against the hard surface. So, um, you know, it makes you wonder, is this a daily thing that they do? Do they go out into the gardens because it's so hot where they live and then practice their music? Or is this like, a, is she giving an impromptu concert? Um, also, in the chat, do you think that these women are related? Like Arian said, they might be sisters. Could they be neighbors? Could they be in the same music class? Could this be a music teacher? We don't have any idea. That's what's great. When you come and look at a painting in the art museum, you can tell the story you want the painting to tell. So a lot of times when we're getting ready to give tours, we don't really learn about what the artists are. A lot of times you can't find. What are the artists? Are these women, did they pose for this? I don't think so. He painted this in the 1900s. Greece was long gone. So is this a memory? Is it a story? Did he read something? I'm sure in school a lot of you have read things or you hear something in a lesson from a teacher and you think of something that you in your imagination already knew about. So that's another great reason to come here and look at what's going on. And sometimes I don't even look at the name of the artist in the beginning. I look and see like this one is one I've always loved because of the colors and I like Greek mythology. So I've always looked at this one and so it made me go and look up who is this artist and I didn't know a thing about this artist. But after that, it made me go research more. So after we talk to you today, you might want to go research some more about Greek mythology, about the music, about women's education, about their fashions, mm -hmm. um, even the Greek colonies, like the rivalry between Athens and Sparta. It's so interesting. So, Arian, what is another thing that you, when you first saw this, that you were really drawn to or had a question about? 
Uh, for me, it was the fashion. And like DJ said, when I looked at it, I didn't know too much about Greek fashion. And fashion's a really interesting thing because it connects us to even today. We think about the styles that we wear. And like I said, for the Greeks, they, they stayed with this fashion for 400 years. And then even later, the Romans adapted it into their togas, which is probably what we thought maybe they were wearing. But when you do some more investigating, you can find out some more uh, historical facts. And so I really learned a lot just by researching the fashion. In fact, there was a website that had one lady showing you how to sew your own ketone, which I think would be a really fun activity if you really like fashion out there. So art can be, art can inspire you to become an artist in all different ways. It, you can you can research about it. You can make art from what you see here. And the art museum is a great place to get inspired. In fact, even museum is a Greek word that talks about the place of the muses. And the muses were from Greek mythology, the nine sisters that represented mm. the arts and the sciences. So please come back to the art museum here. We're free every Saturday and you can peruse our galleries and get inspired by the many, many artworks that we have available. Are we still alive? Yeah. We still alive? Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, one of the things that I wanted to point out that a lot of times you might not look at when you're looking at, a, at a, any kind of painting or picture, look at the frame that is around this piece. One of the things that's really interesting is in the Gro Roman and Greek culture, gold was very, very important. And so if we look at this, the frame, the way it's done, imagine it if we framed it today. Stop and think about, even look in your classroom at things that are framed. We don't look at frames anymore unless you collect art as art form. But in the museum, when you come here, like think back to the beginning when you saw the introduction and even look at this room at the different frames that you see. It is really, um, it's not always an artist's choice. And one of the things that I learned, and it's true for this frame, this frame was not chosen by the artist, our curator tells me. So I think about if I'm an artist and I'm gonna do art, you know, I'm gonna frame it or whatever. And I f we found out a lot here that a lot of this is whoever, artists have agents that sell their works. And so the agent sometimes picks the frame. Sometimes the artist does. A lot of times artists paint the work they're driven by what impresses them and then their passion, but they don't care about the frame. So it's really interesting when you come here, we can point out a lot of different things besides what's in this beautiful painting. I don't think either one of us mentioned this, but paintings come in different styles and mediums. This is an American Renaissance style and it's an oil painting. So most oil paintings don't have glass over them. So this does not have any glass over it, which for me allows you to see these beautiful pastel colors even more. And doesn't it make you wonder where they are? Look at how dense the forest is behind them. My idea of Greece is blue skies, blue seas. It's a little island off of Italy and I don't know where they got all this forest from. So that makes me curious. I would want to go and research a little bit more about the geography of Greece. Erin, anything else to add about this? Uh, nothing more that I can think of. I just really um, am happy that you guys joined us this morning and we'd love to have you here, bring your family and your friends. Uh, we socially distance because you don't can't touch art, so we're not touching anything. We do wear masks in the building, but this is a wonderful place for you to get out of your house and experience art with your own eyes. And I would say you I don't know if you guys are having a spring break this year. It depends on what school you're in, whether you're having a spring break, but spring break week starts March 22nd. The a museum is a great place to come free on Saturday and on Friday and Saturday, March 26th, 27th, we're having a big book sale and we actually have a lot of art books and books about Greece. So it'd be a great time for you to come and see what's going on here. And we even have an event coming up next weekend. So not this weekend, but the 23rd of January. And we're gonna do a really fun wintry theme outside we have some alpacas that will be here. 
we are going to make some art that you can cozy up to and it's for all ages and it's a free event it runs 11 to 3 and we'd love to have you guys come back to the museum we're always doing something we want to be a part of your education so i'm glad that your teachers have brought you here and we love what we do so join us at the wichita art museum maybe for spring break which it will be a dollar emission to dur during that week maybe for a book sale maybe just to come and peruse our galleries or maybe for one of our fun uh free events that occur on the fourth saturday of every month okay and maybe. i i would suggest that you that you oh we're finished <laughs> oh, i was just gonna okay. say yeah. thank you so much for that i wanted to quickly share the second illustration of the um, the liar and the how do you say it the kithra? How do you say kithra? The liar and the kithra to share the second illustration. Yeah, K I T H A R A. K I T H A R A. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. DJ, you, you oh, that's great. You briefly um, mentioned the 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 ladies ho holding these in the in the picture. Um, can you just real brief because we only have like four minutes left? Kind of explain these pictures right here. Can you explain the two pictures on the second, um, the the musical instrument? The singer yes. you briefly did, but if you could just explain okay. maybe two minutes. Two oh, okay. Minutes. Okay, okay, we thought we were out of time. Um, uh -huh. Okay, so the, you're looking at an illustration or a, a photo of two art objects. Those are actually Greek uh, vases and different ceramic uh, vessels that they painted on in this very prominent Greek style. But I pulled them just so you could see that in their artwork that they were making during ancient Greece, they're depicting uh, figures holding the two different types of musical instruments. So that's a more historical record of what those two musical instruments look like. And the, the one that has more strings, they were both held in an upright position, but this, the cathara was considered to be a guitar. It had more strings mm -hmm. and it took more competency to play that than it did the lyre, which is why most women probably use the lyre. Awesome. Well, thank you ladies so much for giving us your time and um, just diving in deeper to this portrait right here. We definitely appreciate that. We appreciate um, letting us know of some upcoming events that ha are that's happening at the Wichita Art Museum. And um, we look forward to seeing more of you through our virtual field trips. Okay. Just okay, well, we thank you again for joining us.